Hi, this is Amy, and I'd like to show you how to use PowerPoint to create a flyer. I used to make things like this using Publisher. I don't have Adobe Illustrator software or anything like that, and even if I did, I have to admit, I wouldn't really know how to use it. So this is just the easiest way for me to make something that's fast and um, I think looks pretty good and, um, and may be useful to you in your life in education. Because uh, it, it's always helpful to have a, a flyer that catches people's attention when you're trying to get people to attend. Even if you are sending this out electronically, it can make your training or session a lot more appealing or even something that you're doing in your class. So here we are, and I want to show you the first thing that I do when I make one of these is I go and change the size of the page. So in this version of PowerPoint, in PowerPoint 2010, it's right here in Design and Page Setup. And I know that that's different in every version, but what you want to find is the Page Setup and you want to change the page size. So in our case, we're going to do letter paper 8.5 by 11 because one of the formats we're going to uh, use with this is print. So 8.5 by 11, and for this one, I chose a portrait format. Also, I wanted to pick that kind because I think it will look most different to you from any other PowerPoint use that you've seen because we always see it in that same format that that's in the landscape and that certain size so just know you can change this and make it any size you want so now I just want to pick apart some of the elements of this not because there's anything magical about this at all it's really super simple but just to show you some different things you can do so these things are all just text boxes so insert and text box right here um, I only use probably three or four different fonts in this thing and I tried to keep it consistent so it wouldn't be too overwhelming um, here's another text box right here this box right here sorry this one right here is just insert shapes and it's just a rectangle now it actually has a different color outline there even though and it, and it actually ends past the box I, I moved it over like that so that when I printed it or saved it out as a PDF you would just see that going off the page with that darker color orange and then these things right here these speech bubbles are just standard um, shapes inside here there's that call out right down there and then I just put another text box inside there. Here's another box that's just centered down there. And then this is a piece of clip art that I got, I think, from uh, ThinkStock. We have a subscription to that where I work. And I think I downloaded that, that piece of clip art there. You could find something online, some open product that somebody's put out there, a photograph, or you can use the clip art that's a part of Microsoft. Now the other, other thing that I want to show you is the formats in which I save this out. So when I get finished with this, I choose File, Save As, and I do a bunch of different things. One thing I save it as, as is a PNG format. So I know it might be a little bit outside where you can see there. Let me try to move it up just a tad so you can see that box. So Save As Type right down here, and it's PNG format. I, this is a picture format. So I save that out to my desktop so that I can put that in emails and in a minute I'm gonna go and resize that and all but while I'm here I'm also going to save this out as a PDF format so I can attach it I know people will see it like I want and if they want to print it then they can in this version of PowerPoint that option is in save and send create PDF document so let me do that too. create PDF and I'm gonna save that out to my desktop also and publish and I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. So there that is. Here is it. It is open in Adobe. And you can see it, it looks pretty nice. And it actually did both pages there. I had two so I could manipulate one, but you get the picture. And then my other format is a picture. Let me open that up and show you how I would manipulate that. So here's my picture format. And you've probably seen me use this before if you've looked at any of my tutorials this is photo filtre and I want to resize this down so that it doesn't uh, look funny in my email so in my email I'm probably not going to insert this any more than 500 pixels wide let me view this at a hundred percent make sure it still looks really crisp and clear if you just put it in your email full size and pull the corner in sometimes it will make your graphic kind of skew and look yucky so so you can do that and um, have it look nice and crisp in your email. So I'm just going to save my graphic out. Now I've got a few different formats. No one else will ever see this PowerPoint. 
hopefully they will never know that I made it in PowerPoint and not care because maybe they'll be drawn in by my adorable speech bubbles. So hope that helps you make a flyer for your purpose. And uh, if you do end up making something with it, let me know. I would love to hear about it. Thanks and have a great day. Hi, this is Amy, and I'd like to show you how to use PowerPoint to make a text label. Um, the way that I use these is in my blog when I want text to appear in a certain font, um, because obviously my readers out there in Webland are only going to have standard fonts. I can't make them see some strange font that I've downloaded from a free font site somewhere. So I want to make them see it like I see it. For example, if I want this header to use in my blog. So this is how I'm going to do that. I'm going to install insert. Um, I can do word art or a text box. Um, I think the word art sometimes ends up looking kind of static, but you can modify it. So if I want this spiffy, you know, dressed up font right here, then I can type in that. And then I can modify it. Let me change it to something that you can see. Um, since that's white, you probably can't see that very well. So to get back to the controls for that, I can just double click on this text. Or I can go up to the word art control settings inside insert and change it. And it actually created a, another set of it. Okay, so let's say I want to use this. I can do all kinds of things to this text. I can change the, the look of it, the colors. Um, the outline colors, all that kind of stuff. You're probably familiar with how to do that. Um, so let me put my picture back in there. I'm going to use my sunflower picture now because I think I have it out on my desktop. So I'm going to insert a picture and I'm going to pick my sunflower. It's actually a custom graphic made by Ryan Carmichael, who is a graphical genius. And um, I'm going to put it there and I'm going to send it to the back and adjust my text how I want it over the top. And now this is a really standard font, but let me let me change this to a free font that I downloaded off the internet. So there's a free font elementary school kind of look there we've got going on, which may be great for your purpose. So now I'm going to save out this text. What I did is I held down shift, so my shift key is depressed right now, and I'm going to click and hold the left button on my mouse and drag over so that I select both of those elements at one time. Now I'm going to get my mouse so it's the four pointers there, and right click, and I'm going to choose save as picture. Now I'm going to put this out on my desktop, so let me call it sunflower text. <clears throat> And I'm going to save it out there. Now here is my sunflower text open in photo fill tray. Um, I really like this little piece of freeware software to do things like this. I'm going to choose image automatic crop and it's going to automatically get rid of that white space that's around the edges there. So now I'm going to save it again and then you're going to see me use this technique over and over again. I'm going to open that same graphic with paint.net, which is another piece. This is open source software. I'm going to use my magic wand tool here. And uh, let me show you how you change the tolerance. There's the tolerance setting right up here. 50% is probably going to be great for my purposes. See how great it selected everything? Let me show you, though, how to change the tolerance. I'm hitting escape on that and I'm going to change it down to 12 percent and uh, you see how it selected less than it did last time so um, 50 percent was good for us let me try that again now I'm hitting delete on my keyboard and getting rid of that background color which in this case is white and now I'm going to do the same thing for the insides of my letters so that I will have a transparent background I can put this on any color I want I know that you can do this in Photoshop, so don't you don't need to email me and tell me all about how you could do it in Photoshop. I know Photoshop's awesome, but if you don't have Photoshop, this is a free way that you can make things like this happen. So that's why I think it's pretty spectacular because it's free. So I'm going to save my graphic again, and now I have got a transparent graphic, and um, it looks pretty awesome, I think, for my purposes as a teacher to put on my website or put into my Moodle course as a graphical label. I think it will work quite well. So I hope that helps and you, you learn something new that can be useful in your teaching career. Have a great day. Bye. 
Hi, this is Amy, and I'm going to show you how to make a few different projects using PowerPoint and some other free tools. So here you can see a sunflower icon on the screen, and this is just a simple example of how to make an icon. And I'm going to insert a new slide into this presentation so that I can show you how to make this. So let me get rid of the default objects here. And the first thing I'm going to do is insert a shape, and I'm going to use this rounded corner rectangle, and I'm going to make it square. And now I've double, double clicked this rectangle, and I'm going to remove the fill from the shape, change the outline to black, make it a little thicker, and I'm going to add a little shadow on it. And now I'm going to bring in my sunflower. It's a graphic I have saved on the desktop of my computer. So I'm just going to insert that picture. And um, I'm going to send it to the back. So it will be behind my little square. And now I will get my sunflower centered where I want it inside. All right, that looks good to me. Now I'm going to save this icon out of PowerPoint. So I'm going to select so that all of the objects that I used, in this case there are just two, but they're both selected. And now I'm going to right click and choose Save as Picture. So I'm going to put that on, on my desktop. And now I've got a picture on my desktop that I can use to work with. I'm going to open that picture up with a little piece of software called Photo Filtre, F-I-L-T-R-E. And I use it all the time to do things like automatically crop. Let me get it in our window here so you can see. And um, I'm just going to change the size of it so you can see the whole thing. And you see how there are some edges around here? Well, they're not too bad on this picture, but if I had some big white edges around that, I would use the auto crop in this tool, and it would automatically get rid of any white space around the edges. So then I'm going to save it there. And then I'm going to do something that I know may seem strange, but I'm going to open it up in another free photo editor called paint.net. And the reason I'm going to do that is because paint.net is a free tool that is really good for um, creating transparency. So let me again move this into the window so that you can see. Hold on just a sec. So here's our sunflower, and I'm going to use this little magic wand tool right here to select these edges and make them transparent. So I want the background of this to be white, and I want these areas to be transparent. So I've just selected those. And now I'm going to resize my icon because I don't want it to be 819 pixels wide. I only want it to be 150 maybe. So let me save it as 150. And let me go back and view it 100% now so we can see how it really looks. There's my icon. And now I can do a file save as and make sure I've got the PNG file format and name it. And I can save it and use that icon any place I can use a PNG icon. Now, if you run into a situation where you can't use a PNG icon, um, so there it is on my desktop. Hopefully you can see that up there. Um, sometimes you have to have a .ico. What I can do in that case, I have Snagit on my computer. And Snagit gives me a way to open that PNG file and then save that out as a .ico. So I'm going to choose File Open and choose my sunflower icon we just worked on. And now if I want to, I can do a Save As here in a standard format, and I can choose this ICO format. So now my sunflower is also saved out as a .ico file. Um, kind of an older icon file type. So hopefully some of those techniques work for you and that is how to make an icon using PowerPoint. Thanks, have a great day.